Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. John here, and I'm, uh, I'm certified in functional medicine and nutrition, and I'm also a certified clinician in whole food nutrition. And today I'm going to talk about some fundamental concepts about hypothyroidism uh, and also uh, Hashimoto's disease. So Hashimoto's disease is an autoimmune disease that causes uh, hypothyroidism or, or, or leads to hypothyroidism. So what happens is that your immune system, it attacks the thyroid gland, killing thyroid cells, and that'll lead to decreased thyroid function, um, again, leading to uh, hypothyroidism. So in uh, in this slide, uh, you know, this, uh, this is a paper that was uh, published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. And this, you know, this paper goes on to say that hypothyroidism can be induced by various diseases, but an autoimmune cause accounts for approximately 90% of adult hypothyroidism, mostly due to Hashimoto's. Uh, now, you know, most people, they're just given the diagnosis of hypothyroidism and they don't actually know you know, if they have, or that they have an autoimmune disease, you know, a, a lot of times we're just told, Hey, you know, you have this, uh, the, you know, this endocrine disorder, you know, uh, you know, did your parents have it or, uh, you know, does your mom have it? And they're like, well, yeah. And, and, you know, your doctor's like, well, it, it's genetic, you know, it runs in the family. You know, some people, you know, just have bad thyroids, but you know, it's not a bad thyroid. It's really, it's an autoimmune disease. And, you know, when a person, you know, actually gets diagnosed, you know, with hypothyroid, they're never told, you know, that they have Hashimoto's and you, you know, you need to have a blood test done and, you know, the blood test, which, you know, would confirm, you know, that the patient or that you actually have, you know, an autoimmune disease are the TPO antibodies or the thyroid peroxidase antibodies and also, uh, uh, and or, you know, thyroglobulin antibodies, you know, but they're never done. And although, you know, 90% of the people have it, most doctors never check to see if their patients have it. And, you know, some doctors assume that if they do have it, then, you know, their patients, you know, TSH levels and, you know, maybe they'll check their T4 and, you know, they'll see if they're getting better or if they're getting worse. And what happens is that if their autoimmunity is getting worse, then the thyroid gland is going to get destroyed and more of the thyroid gland as it gets destroyed, they're going to need to change the dose of their thyroid replacement drug. And, you know, the current healthcare model works like this. When someone, you know, finally does get diagnosed with a hypothyroid, um, they're going to, you know, start thyroid hormone replacement therapy. And, you know, most patients, you know, they're going to get their TSH levels checked, you know, once a year. You know, if you have Hashimoto's, oftentimes you'll see your thyroid medication go up on a yearly basis. And that's because you're losing thyroid function due to the autoimmune attack on the thyroid. And, you know, unfortunately, most doctors, they, they never actually measure the antibodies. So, you know, most people who have hypothyroidism don't really know, in fact, that they have an autoimmune disease. Ultimately, these patients, you know, they're going to have, you know, very little impact from the thyroid placement on their autoimmune disease, even though it's very important for them not to be in a hypothyroid state. So, you know, managing, you know, their autoimmunity from a diet, from a nutrition, you know, from a lifestyle approach, it's a key factor in helping these patients uh, improve the quality of their life. The majority um, of Hashimoto's patients, they're they're typically you know uh, women you know age between twenty and sixty years old, and nearly ten percent show overt symptoms. And this is really important to us because overt symptoms mean that they're very obvious. And you know common symptoms of hypothyroidism. Um, as you can see in the slide, you know, include, you know, dry hair, uh, loss of like the, the lateral third of the, uh, the eyebrow, uh, puffy face and large th thyroid, also known as a goiter, slow heartbeat, joint pain, cold intolerances, uh, depression, fatigue, constipation, brittle nails. Some people so just associate these types of symptoms, you know, with aging, um, but it's actually coming from a faulty thyroid metabolism. And, you know, typically what you'll see in the healthcare system is that a patient, you know, it's really, you know, they're pushing their doctor to figure out what's going on. And, you know, they have severe depression, they have, you know, severe fatigue, weight gain. And, you know, then they finally, you know, do get, you know, properly, you know, diagnosed. 
And these, these are some of the most common clinical chief complaints that people uh, who, who uh, have Hashimoto's will have. Uh, one of the most common clinical chief complaints is going to be general fatigue, you know, meaning that, you know, for the most part, you know, clinically a person's coming in, you know, they're tired throughout most of the day, you know, they're tired when they work out, they have a hard time finishing a workout, uh, they have a hard time recovering from workouts. Um, actually, you know, I had a, a patient uh, tell me the other day that their fatigue is so bad that they actually catch themselves dozing off, you know, while they're at work. You know, these are all, you know, typical signs of general fatigue. And, you know, for the most part, you know, most people just think that they're getting older, but in fact, you know, they may be, you know, really uh, developing Hashimoto's and they, they might not even know it. Um, you know, uh, depression and brain function is, uh, is another key one. Uh, cognitive function, uh, brain endurance, you know, the ability to recall things, uh, the ability to focus, to stay tentative to different tasks, um, you know, all those, you know, start to become issues for them. Uh, another uh, major uh, symptom is chronic constipation. Uh, you know, thyroid hormones have a major impact on receptors in the gut, and they help with intestinal mo mobility. And as a matter of fact, you know, one of the most common symptoms of patients that have hypothyroidism is chronic constipation, and you know, no one's you know really been able to figure that out. And once they're properly treated and they get their thi uh, thyroid function back, then the constipation goes away as well. Um, the other key one is, is that, you know, no one you know, really believes that they're sick. You know, typically what happens with the patient with Hashimoto's is that they don't have very clear symptoms and, you know, they're just, you know, slowly having their metabolic activity compromised and their endurance and their energy levels, you know, they're starting to compromise. And it's very easy to assume that it's just an aging response. Now, you know, another main symptom of over hypothyroidism is that they, you know, have a really hard time with their metabolism. You know, and I would say, you know, half of the, you know, Hashimoto's patients um, that are out there, they're actually uh, have a normal weight and, and, you know, some are underweight. So, you know, they can, you know, if that's the case, they can be even more difficult to diagnose. Now, uh, you know, another key concept is that with time, you thyroid patients will progress to hypothyroidism. Now, a thyroid patient, that's a patient that has Hashimoto's. They have lab findings of it. They just don't have any clear symptoms. You know, the uh, the paper that I showed you earlier talks uh, talks about that as well. And, you know, the youth thyroid patients, they progress to hypothyroidism. And thus, the prevalence of hypothyroidism, it's going to be higher in elderly patients. Uh, you know, the typical age is 40 to 60. But now research is also showing that that's happening much sooner. And, you know, at some point, when people start to have lab markers and early symptoms, they do progress and they uh, and they do get worse. Oh, this is a uh, you know this is a great picture of the thyroid gland, and you know you can see that there's significant amount you know of inflammation and destruction of the thyroid gland. This is what happens uh, in Hashimoto's, but you know whether you're dealing with Hashimoto's or Graves' disease, you know both of them are autoimmune conditions of the thyroid, and you know, Hashimoto's, that's going to lead to a hypothyroid, whereas Graves' disease, that's going to lead to a hyperthyroid. You know, most patients, you know, start off in the euthyroid state. You know, again, that's where there's no symptoms and there's no clear exam findings. And at some point, you know, there's going to be some type of trigger uh, that happens in her life. You know, this list, it's, it's not all inclusive. You know, some triggers could include smoking, alcohol, uh, heavy metal, uh, heavy metals, uh, insulin surges, uh, it could be an infection, um, or, you know, other things, uh, you know, taking place. Now, I'm going to break it down into uh, three stages. So stage one is silent autoimmunity. TSH levels are normal, and there's no antibodies. Also, the person doesn't have any symptoms at this stage. Now, as they progress and they go into stage two, um, the antibodies, they're going to be positive, the TPO and or the, the thyroglobulin antibody. And the patient, uh, they're going to start to have thyroid symptoms, but their TSH is still going to be normal at this point. And then as they progress and they get into stage three, this is where they're going to start to have enough thyroid cell destruction that they become hypothyroid. 
and this is where the TSH will go up, and this is where you'll you'll be diagnosed with hypothyroidism, and then typically you're going to be put on some form of thyroid hormone replacement therapy. Now, um, you know if uh, you know if you have a patient that comes in and they have Hashimoto's and they you know they have children, um, you know it might be a good idea, you know, uh, you know if you have it to get your uh, children checked to see if they have any antibodies as well. Um, you know, you could have like a 50 year old patient and, you know, they come, you know, they have like a, a 20 year old daughter going to college and all of a sudden, you know, she doesn't start to feel so good. Um, and she's not doing too well. You may want to check her antibodies just to see, you know, if, if she does have Hashimoto's, um, you know, even preventatively, you know, you may just want to see, you know, check the antibodies, you know, see if they're in that silent autoimmune disease phase, uh, again, which is, uh, you know, stage one. Uh, so they can jump into the dietary and lifestyle interventions and, you know, start doing that as soon as possible. Now, you know, this is important um, to you because when you look at the conventional management for hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's, you know, we, we have a lot of problems. You know, this is one of the reasons why we have so many people that have thyroid symptoms, you know, that still feel like they're not getting better even though they're taking thyroid hormone replacement therapy. And, you know, it can become very frustrating, um, you know, for a patient, you know, when you, you know, you have, uh, you know, hypothyroidism, you have Hashimoto's and, and you're doing what your doctor tells you, but you're still not feeling any better. And, you know, in the conventional model, the first thing that has to happen is there has to be overt thyroid symptoms and signs. You know, it could be that you gain a lot of weight, or, you know, maybe you struggle with losing weight, especially when you're putting in, you know, all the work, you know, with exercise, you're cutting your calories, um, you know, maybe have some issues with, uh, you know, cognitive function, maybe you have severe depression, you know, finally, you know, finally your doctor orders, a, you know, TSH test and, you know, if the TSH levels, you know, are high, then you're diagnosed with a hypothyroid and that's, you know, typically when you're going to be prescribed some type of thyroid hormone replacement, um, you know, some of the more common ones like level thyrox and Synthroid. Um, and so you're given enough replacement so that your TSH level so that they come back down. This so there's a negative feedback loop that happens here, and you know the patient's going to be you know you basically have to go back to see your doctor every year, you know for reevaluation of you know TSH to determine if you know if your thyroid hormone dose needs to be uh, increased uh, or or changed. Um, and you know if you have any other symptoms, you know associated with autoimmunity or, you know, inflammatory reactions, um, typically you're going to be giving other drugs to, you know, help with those types of symptoms. So, you know, you might get the thyroid hormones, then you'll get antidepressants. Uh, they may get, you know, uh, you know, some type of bowel motility drug or, you know, stool softener to help the constipation. Um, you know, so you're not necessarily, you know, treating, you know, the whole patient. You're just, um, you know, compensating for or getting, you know, thyroid gland uh, is you're getting compensated for the thyroid gland destruction and the loss of the thyroid hormone. Now, the other uh, key thing that's uh, that's important is that many people that have Hashimoto's, especially in the early stages, may not have enough thyroid gland destruction to where their TSH levels are elevated. So, in that case, even though you know you have Hashimoto's and it's the main cause of all the symptoms, since your TSH, uh, since it's not uh, not elevated. Um, you're basically going to have all the symptoms associated with Hashimoto's, uh, and then you'll get treated with isolated, uh, isolated medications. Um, you know, again, if you have depression, it could be that you get antidepressants or, you know, anti-anxiety medications, um, or, you know, oral contraceptives, because now you're having, you know, menstrual cycles that are abnormal, um, you know, you know, and again, it's stemming from the hypothyroidism and, and so on. So, you know, basically that, that is basically the current model. And, you know, when you look at the current model, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious that, um, you know, that the, the standard therapy that used by most insurance companies is going to be the thyroid hormone replacement, um, you know, level thyroxin, Synthroid, and you're going to be told to come back and retest annually. And that's, that's really, you know, the basic management of hypothyroidism. Um, and obviously that, you know, this model is not working and, you know, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be talking more about hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's, you know, in some upcoming lessons. So, you know, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, if you, uh, you know, found this, uh, this information useful, um, please, uh, like, and subscribe to my channel. Again, my name is Dr. Here, and I want to thank you for, uh, 
uh, for joining me today. Um, you know, uh, God bless and, and take care. And um, like I said, hopefully uh, I'll see you some uh, in some up court, uh, up court, uh, upcoming lessons that are uh, uh, they'll be out soon. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye.